Hello everyone, I'd like to introduce you to my new boy. My wash boy. Yes, this is another portable washing machine, a vintage-ish model by Tefal or Kala in some countries. In fact, it's actually branded Kala on the underside. But in the UK, we got this as Tefal, the Tefal Wash Boy. And this is just a washing machine that will wash and rinse your clothes. You'd need to find alternative arrangements for spinning them dry. And I actually do have the companion spinner for this, which I'll show you in a later video. So here is the Wash Boy. It's fairly compact and pretty light. You can easily lift that up and it's designed to be used on the draining board or certainly right next to your sink. And hopefully in this video, I'm gonna show you it in action doing a full wash and rinse cycle. So here it is. Now to store it away, but first of all, I'll just take out the fill hose. And I do have the instruction book with this one, but it does store away into a smaller area. You have to remove the lid. There's a little bit of a knack to it. Let's see if I can do it. This worked perfectly earlier, but it should just come off. Might have to help it along. Come on, you know you want to. There we go, that's one. So this is designed for people that haven't got space for an automatic washing machine, or they live in rented accommodation, or they live in a caravan, or a houseboat, motorhome, something like that. And you can see, we can make it a bit smaller, because the motor unit fits in like that and then you can just pop the lid into there so it's even smaller now you can easily fit that into a corner of your room in a cupboard anywhere really so I'm going to take it apart because this comes apart for maintenance or cleaning first thing out is the main motor unit this is the heaviest part of the wash boy. So all the electricals are in this part here. And that's the drive shaft there. So that drives the agitator in the bottom of the wash tub. And we do have a semi-automatic control system here. This is like a clockwork timer, but it does have different settings. We have a strange word here I've never seen before. It's not automatic, it's alternatic alternatic program tfal and here we see the alternatic programs you should only turn this dial clockwise so if you want to select a program and you just missed it just you just keep turning it you, you shouldn't really go back it might damage the mechanism so on this model we have a pre-wash which is program one a soak which is program two and then program three is your main wash program four is to empty the tank you actually it stops at program four so then when it does get to program four the machine will stop and you have to empty it manually and then before you turn to program five you've got to fill it with the first rinse water when program five finishes the machine will stop again empty it refill with another load of rinse water and then move to program six and then finally to program seven and then when program seven has finished then you have to again manually empty the water out and then turn the dial to zero to switch off so pretty straightforward on the other side of the motor unit we've got handy storage for the mains cable it's just in this little compartment here and it's quite a long cable on this so pulls out so this will just fit into your regular 13 amp three pin socket there's no heater in this so it's very low energy you put your own hot water in so there we go there's that so we can put the motor unit to one side we can just about see not sure if the camera can pick it up it is printed just here this says it's color number 5027 Siri. 21478 220 to 240 volts 50 hertz made in france and it has a 290 watt motor 
I'll just remove the lid with the Sifu window. This might have a few bits in it. This was how it was delivered. I've not actually tried it. I've briefly switched the motor on. So I haven't tested it with water. I'll be doing that, of course, in the video. So you can see here at the bottom of the tub, quite a large, a few black hairs there, they're not mine, quite a large agitator. And it's similar to the agitators you get on these modern plastic single and twin tub washing machines. Although this is pretty big. It takes up more or less all the base of this rather large wash tub. And we have two fill levels. I'm not sure if the camera will pick them up, so I'll try and point them out. You've got this here, the lower fill level, so the water has to be at that line as a bare minimum. And then that is your maximum level for filling up with water. So as I said, everything does come apart for cleaning and maintenance. So let's try and remove the main agitator. It should unclip. There is a, and again, there's a little knack to it. There we go. We'll look at that part in a moment to reveal the wash tub. So if this got grimy or dirty, you can give it a good clean. I'll just tap it out for now. I'm going to clean it by putting some hot water and detergent in it. So here is the wash tub. The only other thing in the wash tub is this gubbins here. You can see this lever and this sort of pipe thing. This is for emptying the washing machine. So let me just make sure that's lined up. Right, there we go, a bit squeaky. So that's in the closed position, so you can fill the machine and it shouldn't leak out the bottom unless the little washer is uh, perished. So if you buy one of these secondhand, because you can't buy them new, you need to check, don't start filling up with water before you've checked it. Make sure it's over your sink, because that could perish, but it hasn't, I don't think. I think it's okay, it should be working. So. When you're filling with water, that's got to be down. It's got to be in this position here. And then to empty, you need to move that lever to the back. This whole thing pops up, revealing the hole at the bottom. And you can see just there. So this empties directly through that hole. So you need to make sure it's just over your sink. So this is designed to fit on a standard size draining board, but you need to make sure that that bit it's overlapping the draining board and that is actually above the sink. So when you open the valve, the water should easily drain out into the sink without flooding your kitchen. So that's about all there is to that part. And then we've got the main agitator. So it works on a sort of gear system. You can see the top here, that engages with the mechanism on the motor unit the drive pulley here, so that pushes into there. And it does have a reverse action, it does, doesn't go one way, it goes both ways, um, as most washing machines tend to do. And it's a pretty simple machine, so you can see how the motor would drive this, and you can just about see at the bottom a cog, which in turn drives the agitator. Obviously it'll go around a lot faster when it's motorized, it whizzes around at a fair pace. I won't show you at the moment, but this comes off as well. I've got another version of this that was quite noisy and uh, I found out how to dismantle it and there was a five pence coin stuck inside here, so that couldn't have helped. So this whole agitator comes off. Actually, I will show you because I don't think there's very many videos of this machine on YouTube, you see that little red doobry there. So you push that forward. Oh, it's dropped down. <laughs> that's fine. And then we can see that's the agitator. And also this, this looks very like um, what you'd find in a microwave really, isn't it? On the, uh, underneath the turntable, a bit similar. So basically this is just a plastic ring with lots of little wheels on it. And then under here, so this is where you might get the odd this is a little bit dirty. It's not too bad. As I say, this obviously is a used machine. So you might get something, a coin or a I don't know, pin or staple or something might get trapped under there. So it all comes apart. You can give it a good clean up and you can just see at the bottom there, that's the cog that uh, corresponds with that. It looks like a pie, doesn't it? That's what drives the whole 
agitator but we need to make sure before we put it back together that we've got the wheels and then we can pop the agitator back yes that's going to work and very important we need to make sure that the little clip is put back I can't remember which way it was I should have been looking I think it could go that way let me just these are all, all this is in the instruction book, but if you don't have the instruction book and you found this video because you don't know how to use your T-File Wash Boy or similar, hopefully by the end of the video, you'll know how to use it because I'll be taking you step by step, showing you how to use the washing machine. So that's, that's it basically. So, and this is also the fill part. Let's see here, this bit here, this is where you attach the fill hose. One end goes on your tap, and the other end goes on here and it'll fill up through this hole until it reaches the line obviously you have to watch it it won't stop when it reaches the line you've got to be there so it's sort of a semi-automatic it's better than washing everything by hand it, it'll do the hard work for you but you do have to be involved just as you'd be involved using a twin tub washing machine so we'll just engage first of all you have to engage this at the front first there are two little tabs at the bottom you can just about see make sure that's engaged and then we have to slide it back in i think that's in yes so there we go okie dokie so i've positioned the wash boy on the draining board with the drain hole just over the small sink in the middle so now i'm going to connect up the fill hose it is a little bit worn this one i might be able to get a new tube hopefully it should work so this end has to go on the tap end and this end goes into the back of the washing machine i've just got to push the hose through this arch and onto the little fill inlet so it might take a little bit of jiggery pokery to get it in position oh, there we go i think that's on and this end pushes onto the tap so there we go that's a nice fit okay i'm ready to turn on the tap and start filling the wash boy with water now most of the machines you see online don't have the hose they've either been lost or perished so you can fill the wash boy using a bucket instead it's just going to take you a little bit more time Now that the water has reached the lower waterline mark, I'm going to put in my detergent. I'm going to use one of these biological liquid detergents in this capsule. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop it in, switch the washer on for a few seconds or so, just to make sure that all the detergent is thoroughly mixed and dissolved into the water. This T-File wash boy will take a maximum of two kilograms of dry weight laundry. That's about four and a half pounds. So basically I'm going to put a few tea towels in here and start the wash process. I probably will be topping it up with water, maybe not up to the max line near the top, but depending on how well the agitation copes with the amount of clothing, or in this case tea towels I put in, I will have to top up. But everything is mixed in, there's hot water in there, the detergent is thoroughly mixed. So now I can start adding the dirty laundry. So we've got uh, a cloth, one, two tea towels, got another cloth there, that's very dirty. Another cloth, all these tea towels have got uh, food stains on them. I think if I was to leave the water level at that, that possibly will be enough, but I will be adding more because I think I'm gonna to top up with water. So I'm just going to turn it on to program one, which is the initial pre-wash. It doesn't last for very long. It just agitates a few times and then it will go into soak mode and leave the laundry soaking in the hot water and then it will automatically start the wash.
when the T-File wash boy has finished the pre-wash program, it will enter the soak phase. So it'll just suspend the clothing and detergent in the water with no further agitation. Once the soak stage has finished, the machine will automatically start the wash cycle. Now, obviously, if you've got delicates or lightly soiled clothes, you can skip the pre-wash and soak and you can go straight on to program number three and start washing immediately. But because these are tea towels that have got quite a few food stains on, I'm going through the pre-wash, soak and wash programs. So in a few moments, the machine will automatically start up again and go into the wash phase. Incidentally, when using the T-File wash boy, I would recommend having the lid closed. Obviously, I'm having it open during the course of the video so you can see the machine in action. There's also an overflow device. So if the water goes above the fill line, and it will happen occasionally when the garments are swirling round, excess water will drain out of the bottom of the machine while it's in use. So it's important to have the machine on a draining board over the sink even when you're not emptying it. So don't think that you can have it on a worktop or on the floor. It's really best to situate it above the sink at all times, because I did notice when this machine was doing the pre-wash that some water was spilling out of the bottom of the wash boy, which is perfectly normal. Okie dokie, so the T-File wash boy has done the pre-wash, soak and main wash program. Now if your clothing is very heavily soiled, you can do that all over again. Just use the same water and turn the dial clockwise to one, two or three. So for example, if you just want a longer wash cycle, you can turn it all the way around to number three and let it wash again. You can also leave the clothes for another soak before you empty the tub and start rinsing it. It's up to you. It's a semi-automatic machine, so you can control what you do with it. But always turn the dial clockwise. Don't turn it back. Always turn it right round again. So you bypass the rinse cycles and turn it to one, two or three, whatever you want to do. I think I'm gonna leave these for a little bit longer to soak. And then the next stage of the wash program is to empty the wash water. With the wash tub now empty, I can start to refill it with clean water for the first rinse. Now, optionally, you can remove the garments, or in my case, tea towels, and wring them out to get as much of the soapy water out of the garments before you start rinsing. This is optional, you don't have to do it, but if you have sensitive skin and need a thorough rinse, this might help. Obviously, if you're squeezing out the garments by hand and you have sensitive skin, I would advise wearing rubber gloves. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start the rinse straight away. When the tub is empty of water, just go in and just untangle any of your garments that might have got a bit twisted up. They can do in this type of machine. So just make sure that everything is free and loose in the tub. Before we start adding the rinse water, it's very important to close the drain. Otherwise, as soon as you turn the tap on, it's just going to drain out of the bottom of the machine. So turn the drain at the side to the closed position. And now we can turn on the tap and start filling with cold water. Once you've reached the correct water level, you can turn off the tap 
and start the first rinse program. Obviously, keep an eye on the machine. If you feel you need to add some water, just turn the cold tap on again and top up the tub. So now we can close the lid and you can see the program has stopped at setting four. So we've emptied the machine, we've refilled it. We can now turn to number five, which is rinse number one. With the first rinse completed, we can now open the drain valve and empty out the water. As soon as the wash tub is emptied, make sure you close the valve again and start filling with cold water. The machine will pause for around two minutes. So if you don't start filling, the machine will turn on again, even if there's no water in the tub. So make sure you start filling it fairly quickly after the water is emptied. So I'm just letting the clean water in. You don't have to do three rinses. You might find two rinses are enough. You can just turn the dial and skip a rinse if you want to. But remember, always turn the dial in a clockwise direction. I'm going to do all three rinses for this wash load. Again, as it's filling up, you can rearrange the garments, make sure they're not tangled up. But don't put your hand in the washer while it's filling because it might all of a sudden start the wash process again. Because as I said, after about two minutes, the timer will click on. As you can see, it's just about to start going. Okay, so as soon as the washer stops, start to empty it out by opening the drain. And then we can start to fill it as soon as the wash tub is emptied for the final rinse. Again, just untangle the garments, close the lid, close the drain and then start filling up with water again. As I say, you have to be fairly quick in emptying and refilling during the rinse cycle. You can't just walk away. You can walk away during setting one, two and three. You can allow it to pre-wash, soak and wash, and then it will stop at setting four. While you're doing the rinse cycle, you really have to be by the machine in order to empty and fill it because it won't do it itself. It's not fully automatic. There's quite a lot of hands-on with this particular appliance. I've got it now to the fill level. The water is pretty clear. This is the final rinse and it's at this stage, if you want to add fabric softener, do it now in the final rinse. So in a moment, right on cue, the washer will start up again. That's the wash load completed. We've done a pre-wash, a soak, a main wash, and three rinses. So the final thing to do is to empty the machine for the final time. So just slide the drain to the back and allow the water to empty from the machine. While it's emptying, I would advise switching off at this point, just turning it off at the socket or unplugging, but we can start to remove the clothes and start wringing them out because there's no way of drying them in this machine. So we can just wring them out into the wash tub, get as much water out as you can and have a dry bowl next to you, preferably to put your cleaned laundry into. 
And then you can either use the T-Fell spin dryer that accompanies this washing machine, and I'll show you that at a later date, or just do what I'm doing, wring it out manually, get as much water out as you can, and then hang it out on the line. It's all right in summer, this should dry fairly quickly, but in winter, it's gonna take longer to dry. But we have done all the washing processes and the rinsing in this machine, which does save a lot of time. It is easier than hand washing, I can tell you. But this is a vintage machine. You can only really buy this second hand. There are modern machines similar to this, and I've shown those on my channel. But I can't help liking this particular t fowl wash boy because it's quite old now. I think this dates from around the 80s, and it still works and it does a very good job. And I think the modern machines you can buy now, all those Chinese made machines, aren't going to be working in five years time, let alone, well, how long ago is the 80s now? 40, 40 odd years. I don't know exactly how old this machine is, but it's knocking on, but it's still doing the job. Now, we can see there is a stain left on this tea towel. Normally, I would wash my tea towels in my fully automatic washing machine at 60 degrees, which is hotter than the water in here, but I'm not bothered, I'll leave it. It's only a tea towel. I can safely say there that everything is clean enough. It's just going to take a while to dry now. Fortunately, I can pop all these in my fully automatic washer and do a separate spin. When you've finished with the machine, remove the fill hose from your tap and let any water in it drain into the sink. We can turn the machine around at this stage and just remove the hose from the back. And again, make sure there's no water left in it. We can now store the mains cable away in the compartment on the motor unit. If any water has splashed on the mains cable during use, just give it a little wipe with a towel before putting it into the storage compartment. It should fit in, it's a tight squeeze, but it should go in and then the plug will just go on the top there and then you can just close the cover so it keeps the cable neatly stored and out of the way. With the motor unit removed just tip the wash tub like so just to remove any residual water that may be in the bottom and then give it a wipe out with a towel and leave it to air dry. If you're not going to use the T-Fell wash boy for a long period I would advise taking out the agitator and drying out the wash tub thoroughly and leaving the component parts just to air dry for an hour or so before storing it away as I showed you at the start of the video. Well, there you go. That's the end of my video on the T-Fell wash boy. If you found my video because you didn't know how to operate your particular machine, please give it a thumbs up because by now, hopefully, you should know how to use your wash boy if it came with no instruction book. There will be a further video to follow using this machine with its companion spin dryer. So please stay subscribed for that. Click the bell icon and you'll be notified of all my new uploads. So for me and the T-File Wash Boy, it's goodbye and thanks for watching.